guys. I have definitely missed y'all, but I hope y'all are doing well and all right right now. Um, I know you won't have any specials classes going on, but I wanted to give y'all an opportunity to do a little bit of art if you haven't already done any at home. So today I'm going to do um, a little directed drawing. Um, there's a lot of pollen in the air right now. I'm sure some of your allergies have gotten up. So I decided today we would do a bee, okay? So in a minute, you're gonna see me start drawing down here of our little bee and how we're gonna do that, okay? So let me turn this little bit off. Okay, so to start our B, we're going to start with a circle for his head. Very simple, just a circle, okay? You can draw big, you can draw small, it's really up to you. Um, you know, I always encourage a good use of space. Now, for our bee, he's got to have antennas. So we're going to give him two little antennas. We're going to draw our little ends on them. And then he's got to be able to see. So we're going to draw two eyes on him. Now remember, we have the big circles, the eyes, and then we have our little pupil dots. So he can actually see. Now bees don't really have a whole lot going on with their nose, but so that our little bee can smell his flowers, we're going to put some dots right there. And then we're going to give him a little smile because he is happy that there's pollen in the air right now. Now, next part of our bee is the section in the middle, which is called, let's see, we have the head, the abdomen, and then the thorax. See, so I throw in some science right there for you. So the next part we're going to draw is your thorax, or no, abdomen, excuse me, which on bees really isn't that big, okay? And they're usually kind of fuzzy. So we're going to give it the idea that it's kind of fuzzy and textured with a few little lines right in there. And I'm drawing this in Sharpie, but you can use pencil or whatever you have available at home. Because I know being at home, we don't necessarily have all of our art supplies, okay? All right, and then we're actually going to go ahead and attach our wings to our abdomen. So we're going to draw our first wing. Now the second wing is technically on the other side, so we're only going to see part of that wing when we draw it. Okay, and then wings have the little veins inside, so we're going to draw a few little pieces of that coming in there, okay? And then same thing on our other wing. Just a few little extra lines, okay? Now, the big part on the end, that is going to be our thorax, okay? So because we can't really see where it all attaches, we're going to come up here on the end, and then they have a little stinger on the end, and then it connects to our abdomen. Now this is where our stripes come in. So we're going to add some stripes. Just like this. And if you notice, I'm kind of curving them because the bee's body is round. And I'm actually going to go ahead and color them in with this Sharpie so they're nice and black. If you hear any extra voices, it's just my child, my daughter. She and my husband are home today. So like I said, we're just coloring this in right now, letting anybody get caught up if they need to. Of course, if you are at home, this is recorded, so you can pause and start it as you need. There we go. We got some nice, beautiful stripes on our bee, okay? Now, our bee's got to have a way to get around when he's not flying, so we got to put in all of our little legs, okay? Now, being an insect, he has six legs, okay? Our, since we have kind of a cartoon V, we're going to have cartoonish legs. So our first one, we're going to draw a stick down and then just give them a little foot pad. And on the other side, we got a little stick. Now, since these feet are on the other side, they're going to be a little shorter. It gives us the illusion that they're on the other side of the V. Okay. And then we're going to have our other little legs. I'm going to let them kind of hang out a little bit back here. 
It's like they're flying behind him. It's a lot of little feet in there. Okay. Now, our bee is actually flying and moving right now, so we're going to give some little marks up here to give us the idea that those wings are vibrating and moving to move his little body, okay? And I'll put a few little pieces off the end back here to let us know kind of which direction he's going. Now, this is the part where I would tell you to think about your background. You know me and backgrounds, I really love them, okay? So our first little background piece that we're going to add is simply just going to be a flower. Now this flower is going to be um, not directly looking at us, it's going to be at an angle. So I'm going to start with an oval or an ellipse over here. And then I'm going to draw the petals out. Now petals on the ends are going to be wider or longer and bigger than the ones that are going to be in the middle to give us that illusion of different direction. Okay. Petals don't have to be perfect. Mine definitely are not, and that is okay. I'm going to give a few extra ones in here. And then i got to do my petals on the other side. Now some of these, I might have them where they're kind of tucked behind. See, this one looks like it's kind of tucked behind this one to give us that illusion, again, of changing our angles. Okay, I'm going to give us a few little pollen dots here in the middle. And then I'm going to have our stem coming down and off our page. You know what, I think I'm going to go ahead and add a, um, a little leaf stem coming off. Again, similar in shape to our flowers. And I'm going to add a center line down it as well. Okay, so there we go. We got our bee and our flower. And I, like I always say, are we Picassos and Michelangelos? No. So it's okay if it's not perfect. I'm going to go back in and add a few little extra details in here. Kind of give us the idea um, that our flowers have a little shape to them and they kind of bend and fold differently. And then I have some chalk pastels that I'm going to color this in with. You can use whatever you've got at home. Um, being an art teacher, I do have a variety of supplies at home. So I'm going to use my chalk pastel to color this in. Okay. Ooh, that's a pretty yellow. It's okay if it gets a little messy. I can always come back and clean it up. So most bees are yellow, so I'm going to use a yellow chalk pastel to color this guy in. Now if you want to take a little what I call creative liberty and come up with a different color bee or a rainbow bee, you know, make it personalized to you, that's perfectly fine. It's a very free form right now. You get to make lots of choices. Okay, simple enough. I'm also going to make his abdomen right here yellow. See, I'm coloring on top of those lines. That's okay. When y'all use your other materials, um, they may or may not let that Sharpie or your original drawing utensil show through. That's perfectly fine. I'm actually going to take my finger and kind of smooth some of it out, give us that fuzzy feel. And I think I'm actually going to bring a little orange in here with it, too. Go ahead and get it out. There we go. I'm going to dab some orange in there. I can just kind of give us the idea that that's a different piece of body, not connected to our thorax back here. And then I've got his face. And you know what? think I'm going to use a different material for his face. I think I'm going to break out some crayons just because I don't want to lose the details around his eyes. 
Excuse me. Let's see if I can get this yellow out of here. And I'm just using the big box of crayons because that's what I have. But if you only have the little 16 or 12 crayon pack, that is perfectly fine. Okay. I'm just using my regular old yellow. Um, a lot of these faces are actually black or brown because they're kind of fuzzy with fur, fur-like pieces on them. But I'm going to stick with this bright yellow because, you know, we got pollen everywhere. And they might be covered in pollen right now. Anyways. All right, and then for his feet, I have decided to give him some little brown feet. I've got lots of browns to choose from. I think I'm gonna go with this one right here, which is just called sepia. Coloring his little feet. I think I'm gonna use the same one for his antennas. Now these wings are usually kind of see-through, so I'm actually just going to use a little bit of a gray pastel. I'm going to put a few marks in there, and I'm going to use my finger to kind of spread it around. It just gives us that shadowy idea of that there's something there. My fingers are growing a little bit of that orange and yellow. That is okay. See, it's not really showing up on the screen too much, but I promise I did put some gray in there. Put a little bit over here. I'm actually going to throw in just a little bit of brown right here on this edge to give me that shadowy effect that this wing is behind the other one. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit down here. Okay. Now, the flower. Okay. Um, color your flower whatever color you want to. If your favorite color is pink, use pink. If it's blue, use blue. I'm going to use a combo of blue and purple. Those are some of my favorite colors. I've got this nice light lavender color purple. And then got these two blues right here. So I'm going to use a little bit, um, a little bit of all of them, I think, for this. Okay. And I'm going to start out with this lavender color here in the middle. So I'm going to do that for pretty much each petal. And that looks kind of rough right now. That's okay. We're going to come back in in just a minute. And I'm going to use my finger to smooth it out, okay? Because I still want to try to see those little scruffy line details down there in the middles of the petals. There we go. Next, I'm going to come in with this lighter blue. I'm going to color just a little bit on top of that purple. So I have this in the middles, just like so. Again, I'm going to use my finger to kind of run and blend it in. Chalk pastels are meant to be a little messy, so it's okay if we get a little crazy with them. Okay, I'm going to use this darker blue right here. I'm going to use it on the ends. is really pretty blue. There we go. Doing it on all the ends of my flower. I'm 
There we go. Now I'm going to do one more thing of blending. And if you notice, I'm kind of pulling down. That way I don't get too crazy out here on the edges of my papers, okay? Now, if you don't have chalk pastels at home and you really like this, regular chalks will work just fine. It'll be a little lighter in color use and you might be limited on your colors, but you can still have fun blending them, whether it be on this um, little project right here or if you just decide to get a piece of paper and see what you can come up with. Not too bad on our flower right now, right? Okay, we gotta put a stem or color our stem in. I'm gonna use this lighter green right here to color in the bottom of it. Now I'm gonna give us that little shadow idea because our flower's in front of our stem. I'm gonna come in with this darker green to do more right here. I'm gonna use my finger in just a minute to blend it out. I'm also going to do the same effect on this leaf just to give us a little dimension. So, there's our leaf. Then I'm going to do our stem. Like so. Can't forget the stem of the leaf itself. Last part I got left, right there in the middle. Um, I have this yellow, um, it's a little different, it's a little darker yellow. And I'm gonna use this one right here in the middle first. Kind of make sure I'm using a somewhat clean finger since I'm doing a lot of blending. And I'm gonna come back in with this bright yellow to add a little bit more value and dimension. And I'm not gonna blend it in as well. I'm gonna kinda tap on it just to flatten the color into it, but not completely mix the two. If I want my little dots back in there for some dimension, then I'll come back in with some black and add it, but I think I'm pretty happy with it, okay? So, there's your bee and a flower. I'm going to try to do a video about once a week, if not more, for y'all, so y'all can have a little fun arts and crafts thing to do, similar to what we would do in art class. But I hope you enjoyed it, and look forward to doing another one later.